Hi, Ten Tech fans. Pete here, N6QW. And what we're looking at here today is a Ten Tech Triton 2. Ten Tech Triton 2. And uh, <clears throat> this came out along about the 1970s, a 5 band rig, 100 watts. Here's the PA. Uh, kind of advanced for its time. Got to be real careful not to touch this. This is a uh, analog VFO or PTO, and just you put your hand on it or you deflect the case a little bit and it jumps 5 kilohertz. But that was the uh, living technology back in the early 1970s. What the uh, anomaly is that we were having with this rig was I was testing it out on 80 meters and all of a sudden uh, no power output stopped transmitting. And uh, I, I did a little troubleshooting and I said okay if I need to find where the signal is let's take a starting place and see where it goes from there. And where I started with is this board right here, which is a transmit receive mixer. This part is the receive mixer, this part is the transmit mixer, and essentially uh, this has two transistors in the transmit mixer. This one here is an RF amplifier, which uh, essentially feeds a diode ring here. This is a little diode ring, and there the in, in, incoming is a 9 megahertz single sideband signal generated off of this board right here. And then uh, it mixes with the LO, which comes out of here. So we have a, an LO of, let's say, 16 megahertz. And we have a single sideband signal at 9 megahertz, which is the uh, uh, generation frequency here in the filter. Uh, and you get, uh, uh, you take an LO of 16, so 16 minus 9 is 7. So it comes out of this board, should, right over this pin here, should be at 7 megahertz. And this is just an example. I may have these frequencies a little wrong, but just an illustrative example. We mix the LO and the sideband, the IF signal, and we come out with a resultant frequency of 7 megahertz on 40 meters. And then uh, that signal passes down through a bandpass filter and then comes through to these two boards right here. This is a low-level RF driver for transmitter, low-level RF amplifier for the receiver. Okay, same circuit board exactly except this one on the transmit side has a similar type of circuit where you had the amplifier transistor here and in the emitter lead there's a small value resistor emitter lead is the uh, is another transistor collector connected up through the emitter through the small resistor and there's a small resistor to ground and in the base comes the alc signal this board over here is what's known as the swr and alc board this little read relay uh, actually disconnects the receiver during transmit. So a, tra a signal that says you're transmitting opens up the relay and it breaks the signal path into the receiver sections. And then there's a little uh, toroid right here and there's a jumper bar here. This jumper bar is the uh, 100 watt RF output and it samples it, feeds it into this transistor right here which is an RF amplifier. These two here are, are connected um, uh, in such a fashion is that you're able to increase the current gain. So uh, this is a Darlington connection, known as a Darlington connection. And essentially, coming off the uh, collector of the Darlington connection are, are two pins. There's a small resistor here, and this pin here says it goes to an ALC light, and the pin right next to it says is the AL ALC voltage. Now, I troubleshot these boards for like a week. I changed some transistors here, and that didn't seem to improve anything, and finally, uh, at the suggestion of KB1GMX, Allison, she said, uh, look outside of the box, and this pin here is known as the ALC light, but what was interesting is I, I always thought it was supplying voltage to a light bulb, and this is a little grain of wheat light bulb here, because there, there's one mounted on, uh, behind the front panel here that flickers, and, and this flickers... Uh, if it flickers too much, you got too much drive, and you cut it back, and so it's a visual indicator when, when you just just flickering, is about the right amount of drive in ALC, so you're not flat flat tapping the signal. So, just just looking at the boards in the nomenclature, this one says ALC light, this one here said ALC. You'd almost intuitively think that it was supplying voltage to that light to make it flash. So after not seeing anything for almost a week and then I, I, I have a manual and I made some copies uh, of the circuit circuit boards and when I look closely here I didn't see any 
collector voltage on these two Darlington transistors. They, they, again, they increased the current gain. I didn't see any voltage, so I said, well, how can that be? So then when I looked at the master schematic that has essentially all these boards and some interconnect wiring, way off in the corner uh, in an obscure position, I saw a light bulb. This light bulb. And this light bulb here essentially is connected to 12 volts. So the power for the Darlington circuit comes through from the 12 volt rail through the light bulb to this ALC light. So it's not supplying voltage out of the board, it's taking voltage into the board from the ALC light. So this is the source. And as you, and there is a reference zener diode here, a 5 volt reference zener diode that uh, sets the stage gain so it only starts tripping at a certain level so up to a certain point you will not not get any essentially generated ALC voltage and what that means is that you your the gain remains constant up to that point and then when it gets beyond that point it starts to clip it because the this uh, transistor here is actually act, acting as a variable emitter resistor to change the stage gain and there's a similar one there so Seeing that uh, that's how it was connected, I just jumpered it. I put 12 volts in there, which essentially would give max gain. And uh, I'm a, I was awaiting getting some replacements. Now, finding what's called a grain of wheat. It's a little mini light bulb here. Uh, 6 volts at 50 MA. This one happens to be 60. I looked all over for it, and I found it at all electronics. Two words, all electronics in Van Nuys, California. So I bought several of them. So anyway, this morning I just jury-rigged it in here. I took the jumper. I had a jumper wire from 12 volts to the ALC light pin because then I knew it would be supplying it. And right now I have the rig connected to a dummy load. And uh, what's nice to see is that light uh, peaks up there. So we can see that uh, as we're hitting voice peaks, uh, the light, gl light glows. And there is a range of adjustment. As a matter of fact, if I cut it back to here, we see no ALC and then I increase it and then pretty soon that light is really bright which is um, which means I'm overdriving it so uh, at a point right about here is just uh, just about the perfect level now um, Allison said boy trying to get that light out of there is kind of tough because you got to take this panel off and man it's just uh, I've done it before for other adjustments and uh, kind of a pain so Allison suggested uh, just uh, Follow on circuits. By the way, this is a this is a SWR ALC board appears in a lot of Tentec transceivers. Beyond this, they were built subsequently. Only they changed the incandescent light. By the way, I'm transmitting in a dummy load, so you you won't you shouldn't worry. Um, uh, subsequently, they changed it to an LED, which means that uh, it's very unlikely that would blow out unless there was some catastrophic failure. But the incandescent uh, must have been in. Well, this rig is about 50 years old, so. Uh, it's been in there a long time and <laughs> a lot of flashing and uh, just finally succumbed. But uh, what Allison suggested is uh, converting this board to the LED version, uh, which also means changing some resistors in here. And uh, I, I, I decided not to do that. But uh, instead, I managed to find a, a panel meter just exactly like the one that's installed in here. And here's that jewel right here. So my plan is I'm going to drill a little hole in the back of the case, back of the case here, and I'm mount that green of wheat. Uh, and in here there's only two little metal brackets with a single, single bolt each. And if you loosen those bolts, I can pull the panel meter out, which is much easier to get to. After pulling the panel meter out, I'm going to drill a little hole and install this green of wheat right in the corner. So I, I'll keep, I'll retain the original meter. So essentially what we can do is uh, if I ever sold this thing and wanted to, someone wanted to return it to stock and, and actually go take the panel meter off and, and put, put it in its right place, they could do it. But anyway, this was a very inexpensive to buy this meter. Drill a, little hole, drill a little hole in the back, mount it up here in the corner, and I'll see that light flash. And so that'll tell me that uh, I've got the right amount of ALC. So it's kind of nice to be able to affect a, uh, a, uh, uh, a fix like this. Now, the panel meter here... Uh, it's kind of interesting because that tells me I don't have a sufficient wire size uh, coming from the power supply to the connector in the back here. That was kind of a problem. Some of the inexpensive power cards uh, use like a number 16 wire, maybe number 14, and, and you need something bigger where you're drawing 20 amps. 
Anyway, Pete here. You can see the ALC is uh, is working, and that's uh, probably just about uh, uh, the right level. And I can see on the watt meter, I'm hitting 100 watts. So uh, indeed, uh, we're doing very good here. Here's the uh, volume control, the uh, mic gain control, and you can see cutting it back and adjust it. And I'll hit the tune. That's tune. And here's uh, full mic gain. And uh, here's just uh, maybe running uh, 15, 20 watts so you can see how the light uh, uh, dims there and gets bright. But this is uh, probably just about the, the right setting here where it should flash and uh, you should see it. So Pete here, N6QW, this uh, finishes, the, uh, finishes the, the fix on the ALC. We now got the pilot lights in or the uh, green and wheat lamps. And we'll be able to uh, modify the meter so I can install it in there. And uh, we'll have a lot of fun with this old uh, Tentec uh, uh, Triton 2. We've made uh, probably about a dozen contacts with it or so. And uh, most folks say it sounds pretty good. So uh, N6QW signing off.